Um, Madam Chairperson and members of the Citizens' Assembly, I'm delighted to be here with you today to address uh, you on climate change and transport. And I want to give you some uh, context uh, for your discussions today. And as already has been discussed, the transport sector is a large consumer of energy and as a result is a significant contributor towards national greenhouse uh, CHG emissions. Transport also represents the sector with the fastest growing greenhouse gas emissions in Ireland and the transport sector is the largest in the, in the economy at 33% and the sector with the energy related CO2 emissions at 35%. So quite a significant contributor to um, our carbon emissions. If we look at how transport emissions are uh, divided across the different modes, this diagram gives you an indication of what they are. So if you look at the largest of those is from the private car, which is the dark pink, at 52.2% um, generated by the private car. Freight is the next largest at 23.7%. So if you combine a private car and freight, that accounts for 75% of the emissions. Public passenger transport um, actually is only 3.5% in terms of bus, uh, and rail contributes 1.1% of all uh, Irish transport emissions. So public <coughs> transport uh, in total, 4.6% uh, of our transport emissions. You'll see there, there's another um, thing called fuel tourism, which contributes 12.1% of our transport emissions. That's from travel um, across the border to purchase fuel in south of the border. That generates a significant uh, proportion of our transport emissions. So what's the story so far um, for meeting our targets? As you can see, um, the, blue, the blue line on the top here is our transport emissions. The green dotted line is our target uh, for 2020. And by 2012, we more or less met our target. But now, uh, since the recovery in the economy, our transport emissions are rising because <coughs> it trends with our economic activity. So the chances of us now bringing down our emissions to meet this target is very challenging. So how do we travel in Ireland? Um, this is the census, the 2016 census, which just shows how we travel to work and education across the country. And 60.7% of our journeys to work and education are made by car. 8.4% uh, on other modes. On foot, 14.6%. Uh, cycling, 2.8%. Bus, 10.7%. And then the train or the Dart or Lewis, 2.8%. Uh, and uh, when you look and divide that into the greater Dublin area, we have a lower proportion of car share mode um, but, uh, and a higher proportion of the sustainable modes. But that's where we are in 2016. And when you look back to what was the census and the modal split in 2011, we haven't really changed. The sustainable mode share nationally has stayed at about 31% and the car mode share at about 70%. So 70% uh, and it hasn't changed between 2011 and 2016. We'd like to see the car mode share uh, reducing and the sustainable mode increasing, but that has not uh, happened. But in the greater Dublin area, the sustainable mode share has increased slightly between 2011 and 2016 and the car mode share has gone down. So we have made some moves in our urban areas to use more sustainable travel. Looking across uh, all travel, across you know, all the different, not just work and education, the car dominates, as you can see, at 74%, and then walking and um, walking in densely populated areas, walking is at 15% right across nationally, um, and then public transport is at a 6% nationally. So just run through th those. And just if we want to compare ourselves to the EU, uh, making a comparison to the EU, Ireland is second on the left there, and the EU average, 28 uh, countries, is on the, the very left-hand side. And Ireland actually has a low uh, car mode share at 80% compared to the EU average, which is above 80%. Our, public, our sustainable transport modes, we have a higher usage of bus uh, compared to rail, uh, compared to the EU average and also many of the other European countries. So 
in one way we're actually not doing too bad compared to our EU average, uh, the EU average, but our car mode share is uh, either stable or it could grow uh, significantly in the uh, economic recovery. And then if we look about why we travel, what are the purpose of our journey, obviously uh, on the bottom of, this, of the graph there you see the, the, the main uh, purpose for travel is for work and education at just under 30% in 2014. But the next big purpose uh, is actually shopping at 24% in 2014. So, you know, when we think about tra uh, traveling um, and individually as we travel, you know, a very large proportion, almost a quarter of our travel is actually done for shopping purposes. This just gives you a graph of how uh, students travel uh, in primary education. And again, we, when we looked at back in the 1980s, um, the, a higher proportion of school children were actually travelling to school by sustainable modes. And um, that's now reduced so that 60% uh, of our primary school students are actually now travelling uh, by car to school. So you can see the complete change in the graph um, <coughs> from the 1980s here up to now 2016 and the, the green is the public is the car transport the higher one there and then if you look at uh, student travel patterns to college um, it's slightly uh, better however there's still a very car high car usage so it is actually sorry it actually went from a very low level of car usage to increasing to this level so now in around 35% of students travel to college by car and the sustainable modes have, have reduced. In terms of reducing carbon emissions in land transport, how do we go about doing that? And there's three main areas that we need to look at. We need to avoid uh, travel, reduce or avoid the need to travel. We need to shift and shift to more environmentally friendly modes and then improve uh, the vehicles that we use um, and improve the efficiency of the vehicle technology. So avoid, shift, improve is the main three areas that we need to look at when we're talking about reducing carbon emissions. In terms of reducing the demand for travel, one of the ways is better integration of land use and transport planning. That's building our, uh, our employment and our housing closer to where there is actually sustainable tr uh, travel uh, modes. We need to encourage greater use of sustainable modes by making the existing public transport services more attractive, provide new public transport infrastructure, and then change attitudes to walking, cycling, and public transport usage. Sorry. And then we need to uh, transition to low emission fleet. We need to purchase low emission bus fleet for subsidised services, regulate commercial bus services to use low emission fleet, regulate the small public service vehicle industry, that's the taxi industry, to use low emission fleet, and then provide additional charging infrastructure and incentivize the transition to el electric cars. In terms of reduction in travel demand, this is just a diagram to illustrate um, where you live yourself and how you, where you choose to live and where you, if you live away from the, your destinations, if you live a, at, at a distance away from where you are working, at a distance away from school or shopping, that is generating an awful lot more transport demand than if you go on the right hand side where you locate your home close to where all your destinations are, shopping, school. So more kind of urban based kind of uh, development is actually more sustainable and then would also reduce the need to travel and then reduce the uh, transport emissions. And part of the means of doing this is the government has published the draft national planning framework which sets out how we should plan for the future of our nation uh, and, and providing and reducing the need to travel by locating our, where we work and where we live much, much more closer together. From that then will be developed regional plans on the same theme and which will set out medium and long term horizons which will um, uh, also set out what transport projects are required and it provides a, a framework for investment in those transport projects. And one of the, the uh, 
the transport strategies that the NTA produced was the transport strategy for the Greater Dublin area, which sets out for 20 years what infrastructure is required to reduce the uh, travel by car mode and increase the sustainable mode uh, travel. It's the first statutory plan and it provides transport solutions to support the land use planning vision uh, for the region. It takes account of revised population and employment uh, projections. And the outcome, the planned outcome, is that we reduce the car mode share from 62% for um, morning trips to 45% and increase the sustainable mode share. But in order to achieve that, we need to invest about 10 billion in our public transport infrastructure. In terms of making public transport services more attractive, this is the work that the NTA does uh, on a daily basis. We've delivered a national intermodal online journey planner. We've real-time passenger information. We've integrated ticketing via the Leap card. Over two million cards have been sold. And they're, they're all there to try and improve the uh, attractiveness of public transport. Uh, and its reliability and punctuality. We are uh, providing additional services, improved reliability and punctuality of those services, and improved information at stops. And Transport for Ireland is the brand that's been developed as the unifying brand. I just wanted to give you some figures in terms of investment in public transport infrastructure. In order to keep our roads infrastructure maintained to the level that uh, we want them to be maintained, it costs around uh, almost just over a billion uh, to maintain our roads. And to maintain our public transport infrastructure, about half a billion, 400 million. And that's in gross figures. Net then, because of some of the income that we gain from roads in terms of tolls, and then public transport uh, related to other uh, grants, net we need to provide 1.3 billion um, for our roads and our uh, rail infrastructure in particular. And the cost of operating public transport, this is an annual cost. It costs around 802, 820 million to operate our bus, rail, Lewis services. From that we get an income of about 575 million and a state subsidy makes up the difference of 245 million. So if we were to double the provision of, um, of public transport services, we, that would obviously increase the operating costs in, to in and around another 800 million to provide, uh, say, a doubling of the services. Um, another 10% of public transport journeys are provided on, a commercial, on commercial services, and the cost of operating those is not known. In terms of the capital plan that the, the, the government have in place now, um, there is 3.6 billion set aside for public transport infrastructure, and an, an additional half a billion was announced in the budget. Um, the roads current plan has 6 billion uh, set aside as well. So included in the current capital plan is the new Metro North construction, which will start in 2021, electrification of the DART uh, to Balbriggan, and then the Bus Connects programme. And Bus Connects is a programme to improve and radically transform our bus system in our urban areas. And it looks at bus priority, bus rapid transit, and a design of the, redesign of the network, and improved ticketing and fares system. And the government announced 700 million to be invested in this new system. Uh, and we're hoping to roll this, start rolling this out in, in two years' time. In terms of changing attitudes to sustainable transport, we invest uh, nearly two million in our smarter travel programmes. These are voluntary programmes working with large employers and third level institutions to implement travel plans. And the Green Schools programme is also to encourage uh, school children and their parents to use sustainable travel. This is some of our sample workplaces that we engage with. And these are some of the actions, such as providing cycle parking, showers in workplaces, and then car sharing, also try and encourage car sharing in the workplace. In terms of public transport emissions then for, on public transport, they represent just under 5% of transport emissions. And what we've been looking at is for buses, alternative fuels, looking at either CNG or hybrid electric. The Lewis is already a modern system, but there is potential to review braking systems to reduce energy usage and trains then also look at how they can be uh, more fuel efficient. Currently, in terms of rail fleet, the DART and Lewis services are the only fully electric rail services. 
The DART expansion programme is a key project in the GDA transport strategy, and that includes, um, as I said, commencing electrification of the Northern Line. And we are looking at new fleet, which is required to, uh, uh, to meet growing demand on commuter services, and we're looking to future-proof any new fleet purchase for diesel and electric transmission. We're also looking at low emission buses, and this is a complementary measure to transition a significant proportion of the bus fleet to low emission vehicles. There are numerous options available, um, and some of those are electric buses, which are either hybrid, electric hybrid, and full electric bus. So we are going to start the process of transitioning to lower emission vehicles, and the Bus Connects program targets 50% low emission by 2023 and 100% by 2030. And we'll make a decision on the te technology by the end of 2017. In terms of the transitioning the car emission fleet, these, this graph just gives you um, the emissions for new cars from 2000 to 2013. And you can see the reduction brought about by EU regulation. Um, and as we have a, a, an extensive road network, it's become busier over the past two years with an increase in total kilometres driven. So I think we do need to focus on what we can do in relation to electric vehicles. This shows you the number of um, electric car purchases over up to 2016, very low levels. And some of the reasons uh, that have been given why um, electric cars are not being used is that there has been limited vehicle choice, there has been range anxiety, you know, in terms of how far you can travel, and then there's low consumer awareness. The um, map on the right shows you the public electric charging points. And the, one of the barriers to electric car usage is also the cost of the batteries, but those, that cost has actually reduced uh, between 2008 to 2017. And the range uh, in terms of battery, is, it's now looking that EV ranges will soon be exceeding 300 kilometres. So I think the ministers, both Minister Ross and Minister um, Nocton announced yesterday that they want to show that they are fully committed to, to um, moving Ireland to a low emission, uh, particularly low emission fleet. And in terms of the announcement they made, made yesterday, they want to ensure that all new vehicles will have zero emission, all new car vehicles will have zero emissions from uh, 2030 onwards. They want to continue the VRT reduction and the SEAI grant for new vehicle purchase and a grant to support the installation of home charger points. There is a new EV taxi grant uh, being announced as well, which will commence uh, next year. So in conclusion, transport will play its part in reduction in CO2 emissions. There, it is a medium to long lead in on reduction strategies, a, a greater level of integration of land use and transport planning, and a greater share of people using uh, sustainable transport, and that public and private trans transport fleet will transition to low emission technology. Thank you very much.